All right, let's uh, let's get into this this uh, this this last game here. I can't talk. I'm hungry. My brain's not working properly. Yeah, I know what you mean. But uh, yeah, one more. So game number four. So this is another thirty-minute game. It looks like. Yeah, this time we play with the black pieces. All right, so let's switch let me that adjust up. it. Yeah, switch the side for the other side of the stream. Okay, good. So you're playing black. I'm quite surprised that I managed to pretend to see the board this entire time. Say that again. I'm I'm surprised that I managed to pretend to see the board uh, this entire time. It's really. Uh, I mean, I, I wasn't aware of this superpower. <laughs> well, it's well, you learn something new every day, Tom. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, after we finish this stream, I want to actually. Uh, see how far I can take it and play Blitz with the same settings where I don't see the board and see how it will turn uh -huh. out. Yeah, go for it. I'd like but to see that. It will probably be disastrous, but it will be fun as well. So, let's see. Now you play with black, d4, knight f6, c4, e6, a3. Wow. <laughs> I love it when my opponents play a3. <laughs> okay, so this is a classic case of a uh, of a uh, bish phobia, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he doesn't want to go into B B four over there. Yeah, bish phobia. There you go. So now <laughs> he went D five. Keep on developing takes, and he took with the knight, which I don't think is precise. You allow E four with tempo. Okay, all right. And uh, just a quick example, if you go knight f6, knight c3, so you kind of lost uh, like a move there, and you have one sure. pawn less in the center. So, okay, all right, that's good to know. Uh, however, I'll just quickly mention that this wouldn't have been a bad move if his knight was already on c3. So just to quickly show, had he played knight c3 here, let's say just a random move, bishop e7 or c5, and he takes, now you can take with the knight, because after e4, you have knight takes e3. Sure. And you yeah. don't lose time. Okay. Okay. C takes d5. So the correct move, as you probably know by now, is e takes yeah, d5. Yeah, e, e takes d5. All right. Yeah. It's very solid, though. So, in fact, um, even though it's okay for black, it doesn't properly punish a3. So I think a more, like, let's call it principled move would be c5. In just immediately opening. break up that center right away there? Yeah, so that a3, like, immediately asking him, what what are you doing with this a3 move? Just prove why you're not worse, yeah? All right, okay. And, uh, yeah, after d5, this is uh, okay for black, but, I mean, he, after e d5, it's okay, but it's very static because you don't have any serious pawn breaks. c5 is not that good because he will be left with an isolated pawn. Okay, so knight d5, knight c3. Everything is normal. Uh, actually not, he didn't play e4. So, and now I would like the move c5. Just like I mentioned in the previous game, followed by knight c6 to to put pressure on the center, yeah? Okay. And um, knight c6, okay, is uh, a little bit passive after, after he protects like he did. And now this knight finds it difficult to... to to be active later on and this pawn cannot move so and also notice that this bishop cannot really go out so i'll just yeah i figured i'd just fianchetto that guy eventually yeah but fianchettoing feels more to the point let's say when you go c5 let's say they go some e3 and okay knight c6 and maybe after you finish with the development and castling then you go b6 bishop b7 with the pawn c5 i don't know just Looks much nicer. All right. Um, okay. okay. So bishop e7. After e3, h3 castles. Another waste of a move by him. This guy has a real phobia, and there was not, there, there wasn't even a bish that could could reach that square on g4. It was just yeah, he's a very defensive player. A huh? Very precautious opponent. I like to play against those. So castles, knight f3. Knight of six. So far, so good. Oh, sorry, I missed the move. Knight of three, b six. Sorry, okay. knight of three, b six. 
yeah, now we played e4, knight f6. It makes more sense. Can you take on c3, actually? Uh, y yeah. Yeah, and he takes back, and then you probably just go bishop b7. But, okay, I guess... I guess now his pawn on d4 is, is protected, so... Uh, but I like it. Just... I mean, you don't lose time this way, because you took with tempo instead of going back. So... Yeah. And now, just to quickly mention here, the plan for black is knight a5 followed by c5. Yeah, okay. It's, it's okay for black, even though it's a tempo down compared to having played c5, you know, before. Yeah. Uh, which... Okay. So, yeah, knight f6. Okay, so... So far, nothing too dramatic, but uh, just some small remarks. e5 is weakening the light squares. The, the big advantage of having such a center is that you keep it there, yeah? You just, it just sure. controls so many squares. Yeah. And it's really nice for him, grabbing space. You just want to develop and castle and keep like uh, putting your pieces around the center. And this move e5 is very weakening. I don't like it at all. Okay. Okay. Bishop c4. I'll ask you some question about the position now. What do you think? No, actually, you, you already answered in the game. There is nothing to add. Bishop b7 is good. And now you asked yourself probably the right question. Yeah. What is he want? Nothing. Which piece doesn't work? Uh, my rooks or my... Uh, or, or my uh, or what do you think? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, the rooks. That's true. You want to open up the position. And you played knight a5 with tempo. I'm not sure if you were aware of asking these questions or not, but uh, I mean, this in a way also answers them because now after knight a5, you will play c5 next, and you will you will have the c file open for the rook. So yeah, bishop a2, c5. We have a very interesting uh, middle game position, and now your pos your opponent decided to continue with his precocious. Style, so he plays knight h2. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird move. What is it? Where is he going with that? Does I he want to go to g4? Know. Maneuvering the knight to heaven. I have no idea. Maybe he wants to bring his queen out or bring it, bring his knight to g4. Yeah, but or something. Uh, you but need to develop. I mean, the bishop, the rooks. Uh, hey, look, I'm with you. I'm yeah, with you yeah, on this one. I, I don't, I mean, this, I'm, I'm personally offended when people treat their, their pieces like this. So now you want to play. Rook c8 probably, and then uh, see if you can open up the position on the c file and so on. Queen c7 is also fine, I guess, but it's just, as I mentioned earlier, if you remember, you know where the rook is going to be, and maybe the queen yeah. will have a better square. So, you remember about flexibility? So, um, if it was... Let me give an example. Uh, rook c8. So, do you see the position? Yeah, I can. I can see it. Yeah, but what do you? What do you? What do you mean? Like where it's gonna go? Yeah, I'm just gonna see. Show a sample line. So here, after rook c8, bishop e3. So with your queen on d8, you can, for example, play bishop d5 now, and maybe play the, put the queen on d5 later. Okay. So you're a little bit more flexible. So I'll I'll say it uh, in a in a clearer way. You know that the rook is going to be on c8. You don't know for sure where the queen is going to be. So it's yeah. more flexible to develop the rook first. Okay, all right. Okay, queen c7. Now f4. Mm, rook d8 is really nice, putting it in the same uh, file as the queen. Now bishop e3. And which piece doesn't work, let me ask you? Right now my knight. Which other piece? Uh, either the other rook or the bish. Which one didn't move? Uh, the, the, okay, the a rook then. Yeah, so remember, if you didn't move a piece, you want to develop it before moving uh, the other pieces for the, for an additional time. So rook okay. c8 is, is much more urgent usually. So you play it, and just if it was your move, you want to maybe take and go knight c4. To go forward with your position. Or, All right. or maybe okay. even queen c3. Okay, okay, so knight c6. Putting pressure on the center, but going backwards and not developing. So it's not the most precise, I would say. And he goes for the attack. Okay, finally he shows some cards. <laughs> All right. 
And he's a fighter, man. You can't take that away from him. And he's also exploiting this uh, move of yours because uh, this last move uh, closed the bishop, yeah? Yeah. So, very sneaky opponent. So Wait, which, la which last move closed the bishop? The knight to c6. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. So, now, uh, rook d7, very um, straightforward. You want to double the rooks. I like it. Rook g3, rook a d8. And uh, let's summarize what happened in the opening. Because we can say that you finished your development uh, now that you've moved the a rook. All your pieces are very active. Do you agree? Um, yeah. I mean, my my dark squared bishop isn't doing much, but uh, it looks like the game's about to bust open pretty soon. Yeah, exactly. So he and he didn't finish his development. His rooks are kind of away from the center. His queen is not really developed. So yeah, none of his pieces is... are really. None of his pieces seem to be really working together that well. Yeah, and the bishop on e7. You're right that it's not very active, but it's going to be very good in the defense if he's. To attack you. So yeah, yeah. Did he? So, what did he play? Like he queen to bishop g4? b1. Oh, so he's trying to attack even more. He doesn't care about this rook. He just wants to mate you. And um, well, when someone plays against you on the wing, you want to counter attack in the center. In this case, it comes uh, with a lot of force. You just take a pawn. <laughs> And uh, yeah, now it looks really bad for him. He took on h7, which seems a little bit desperate, but understandable. Yeah, I thought I was okay here. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a good uh, sacrifice. But uh, now he wants, he goes f5. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so he's just giving you the entire set. <laughs> so knight takes. I tried to find. I tried to find the interesting games. I, I sped through it a little bit though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your rushed. opponents are, are keeping it interesting. I agree. <laughs> interesting knight five. For it. Bishop h six. Oh, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> okay, the viewers, uh, if anyone is is watching, and uh, they, you're more than welcome to try and find uh, the move Hutch played here. I think it's a really nice uh, idea to exp It's funny, he's trying to attack you and you're the one ending up on the offense. So... Um, oh yeah, is this when I got it, I forked his queen? I think that's what happened here. Um, it was a little bit nastier than just a fork. This is... Something... Yeah, I threw a check at him. Yeah, this is something I call a family fork. The answer is queen c5 check and after we played king h1, he took the rook and you don't only fork the queen, you also mate your opponent. So. Oh, that was a checkmate? I don't think I even realized that. <laughs> you thought he resigned, yeah? It's just a checkmate. Yeah, I, th I think, I think I, yeah, I thought he resigned at the time. Yeah. Plus hitting the queen, it's really nice. So, uh, yeah, this is something I call a family fork. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, so, or maybe a royal fork, actually. Uh, I forgot all the terms. Yeah, I was very young. So, very lovely game so far. Thank you for the analysis. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on and, and sharing your wisdom with us. I'm actually going to give you a host, so if, if you're going to stay on a little bit longer, I will. Uh, everybody that's in, in my chat, you guys are going to get an opportunity to see him play. What It's chess juice, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'll reach out to you like towards the end of the weekend, and then we'll set up another time to do something like this. Yeah, let's see you losing a little bit. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll I'll be sure to play like I'll, I'll be sure to play some thirty minute games this this uh, this this week and try to get you some interesting ones. Yeah, instead of ones with stupid blunders. Just the fact that you're playing thirty minutes games are is is really nice. I mean, yeah, yeah. it was it was it wasn't attractive to me before, but I but I want to get better, and I felt like I wasn't getting better playing ten and five minute chess. So I mean, not fast mm. enough, maybe. Yeah. 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 I All agree. right. Uh, good. Good. I'm with you, pal. I'll uh, talk to you soon. Thanks. All right. Okay, so it was an interesting uh, experience. We looked through four games.